Five standouts you should really practice like this. Here are five technical and melodic tools you should master. Blue Buzzer, Pedido, Autumn Leaves, Blues, Pent Up House. Beginning with five basic standards is a great way to start improvising. I've chosen five standards which are relatively easy to begin with, easy melody and easy chords. What do you need to know and what tools do you need to master to play a solo on jazz standards? On each standard I present one or more technical and or melodic tools you should work on to be able to play a good jazz improvisation on each tune. Get all skills going on each tune and you have five tunes down in the pocket. <laughs> Why did I choose those five standards? What melodic and technical skills do I need to master on all standards? Autumn Leaves, learn the melody. Perdido, learn the basic chords plus inversions on other chord patterns. Blue Boss, play melodic chord note solos. Pent Up House, learn the scales. Blues in C, play melodic solos using scales. Full solo manuals, what is this? Show, play and analyze a short solo on Autumn Leaves. Hi there, I'm Son Bellegård and welcome to Son Bellegård Saxophone Lessons. Why did you choose those five standards? The five standards I have chosen, Blue Bossa, Pedido, Autumn Leaves, Blues and C Pent Up House are five standards which are fairly simple to play. By every beginning I'm convinced that it's very much easier to start simple than to start very hard and put things away and start skipping and all kinds of those stuff. The melodies are rather repetitive and melodic. Most of the melodies consist of basic chord notes and some exceptions, of course. The chord progressions of each tune is not overly complicated with lots of intricate music theory involved. The tunes all consist of mainly two five ones and a couple of secondary dominants. What melodic and technical skills do I need to master on all standards? You have to master the basic skills for improvisation, which are basic chords and scales. Mastering basic skills and chords is pretty broad. Uh, this is why I've cooked this into learn the melody well, seventh chord, ninth chord, and certain scale patterns and scales, of course. Um, adding this to make melodies play melodic solos. Autumn leaves, learn the melody. The melody is of course the most important thing to learn. From the melody comes our harmony and our rhythm. When we look at the melody of autumn leaves, when we look at the melody of autumn leaves, we find out that the melody consists parts of scale and parts of chord notes. This gives us a good indication in what key we are playing and what scales and chords we're going to use. The key is A minor, and starting in the key of G, the parallel C major key. Basically, the tune is changing between these two parallel uh, minor and major key the whole way through. When you know the basic melody, you can start experimenting a bit with the rhythm of the melody to learn this even better. Begin with small changes and then add melodic changes later when you are really in control. I'll run through the first eight bars of melody and try to explain what I do every two bars. Start really simple. Speeding up the first part. Embellishing the melody part really a lot with uh, scale notes. Using the whole scale instead of three notes playing. Playing out that scale, then going down, actually changing the melody, going down to a low E, improvising on the melody just using the basic C major key and the A minor key, going up and down the melody. Make sure that you can hear the beautiful melody all the time. 
Perdido, learn the chords plus chord inversions and some other chord patterns. This part is so very important. Just get those chords under your fingers. I'll do some small samples of chord patterns you really should run through and get really under your fingers. The first is the basic seventh chords going up. <laughs> through these. Know this pattern going up the chord. Now I'm starting kind of rubato, but you should really get in there having a steady pulse. One, two, three. You also hear, I've written down those patterns, but I'm changing the octave sometimes. You should be flexible in this. Of course, there are lots, lots, lots of more chord patterns you have to know. If you can play this chord pattern up, you should remember everything comes down to. Again, start really slow. Enjoy the sound of these chords. Just Take it really, start, maybe do a little improvisation over it, uh, rubato. You have to play this in time. Two, one, two, three. Important, go through the whole form, the whole form of Perdido, and take it through all the chords. Going up, seventh chord, going down, seventh chord. Every time you play it up, play it down. And the same goes for the basic nine chords. You should learn the basic nine chords, so five note chords. Going up to the ninth of each step, I'll just take four bars out here, the first four bars, the D minor, the G7, the C major, and the A7 flat 9. To the ninth, here goes, one, two, rubato, now. <laughs> turn this pattern around and play it down. Also, another pattern you really should learn, thinking differently on the chord. So you know we have a D minor 7 chord. The D minor 7, of course we play the D as the first note, but all notes are important. Play the chord notes to the ninth from the third, from the third of the chords. So the D minor G7, C7, C major 7, A7 flat 9 sounds like this. Playing it from the third to the ninth. So we get a four chord, from the third to the ninth of each, each chord. Rubato first. Again you hear, sometimes I just skip to the second octave. So remember that be creative when you practice, also when you practice your technique. In time, two, and one, two, Three. Turn it around, turn it around. Get that upper structure from the ninth to the third. Turn it around. There are so many chord patterns you should know. Take a look at the following videos to add more patterns to your vocabulary. The eight most important chord patterns you need to know. Check it in the description of this video. Blue Bossa, play the chord note solos, use guide tone lines. I promise to show you five standards on which you should start. On Blue Bossa, I want to show you how to play a melodic solo using the simple tool, the guide tone line. I've taken the chords of Blue Bossa, put in a guide tone line and just drawn it through the whole form of Blue Bossa. Lead the closest way from one chord note to the next chord note in the next bar using one note, the first example is using one note. Just playing it easy, 
no timing, just take it easy and know those notes. I've already practiced the chords, I have this in my system, now I add the guide tone line, Blue Bossa, here we go. first play the chords and really really get this guide tone line going of course now I play the rubato you have to add um, a metronome or you have to add a play along so you can hear this going on so next step first step play rubato second step add music or add a, um, a play along or a metronome going further you know this the next step is instead of playing the whole notes in every bar, you start adding rhythm. Add rhythm to every note, it's very important. Of course you could do this rubato, but rhythm, you know, uh, it's kind of funny if you, if you don't play it in time. But you could take every bar out and play this in a rhythm. So we have this straight bossa nova beat, so I'm just add rhythm to my guide tone line here. example with a play along for, Ruba, uh, for Blue Bossa. Play along with Blue Bossa with rhythm on the guide tone line. to the guide tone line. So what chord notes can you add? Add the closest by. So if you have a guide tone line like this one starting on a C and you have a D minor 7 chord, well add the A under this. That's the next chord note, the next adjacent chord note under this one. If you have a low guide tone line, add the uh, note on top of this one. I did this, I have a two note guide tone line. So I'll go straight into playing this with the rhythm adding a bit of rhythm, so adding the play along and add rhythm to this guide tone line. Of course there's a step first where you should just play the guide tone line as is without rhythm, rubato. Then there's a step where you just play it as is with the backing track and then you start adding rhythm, rubato, and then you start playing with the backing track. I'll go straight into playing it with the backing track. <laughs> tell you what I just played, adding more notes, adding more rhythm, just playing it bar by bar. <laughs>
again. Just switching between the two guitar lines. And then to the D minor. You know the five first notes of the scale on that D minor, F minor. Playing that F minor triad going down. Bring the whole arpeggio down, use some a little bit of Coltrane patterns. Using a chromatic scale on that last bar on E flat, going further to the E half diminished. Jumping from the B flat to the G and hitting that E sometimes. Just playing the B flat, the A and the G on that A7 flat 9. D minor. Chromatic between the A and the F. Playing the chord down. You see there are lots of possibilities just playing rubato over these. When you have the chord notes in your head, you can easily get a very, very melodic thing out of these guide tone lines adding the chords. If you want to know more about the guide tone lines and really boost your solos, check this video. Chord note solos instantly boost your jazz skills using this method. The link is in the description. Pent up house, learn the scales. Pent up house is a great tune to develop your scales because of the simplicity of the chords. The whole thing is an A major for the tenor saxophone, add some extra 2-5-1s in the bridge. We must start with the basic scales and the basic chords. Um, the whole thing is an A major, thus we use the scales of A major. Please start the scale exercises slow. Rubato and later add the timing. Choose a slow tempo where you are secure of what you are doing. Play all the right notes the first time. Don't rush it, there's no need. Play up the scale and then add a metronome. So you have a little click track just playing um, the timing. Adding a metronome sounds like this. One, two, three. Basically just getting this timing thing in and knowing what the 4-4 four four bar is, so uh, getting flexible in this but also getting that steady pulse uh, feeling. Of course, what I mentioned earlier, play it up, play it down. Following our chord patterns, we should also play the scales from the 3rd to the 9th because the B minor 7 is not only a B minor 7 with a B in it, it has also the D or the C sharp in it. So let's go on this one. Just play the first four bars so we have an idea of how this sounds. So the first four bars of Pent Up House going from the 3rd to the 9th in the scales. Another thing, add the octave. If you see, you can activate this pattern. I'll try to do that in this exercise. One, two, three. That's the first four bars of this one, playing from the third to the ninth in the scales of Pent Up House. Of course, now we're playing it up, and you know, play it down. Turn these scales around. You should really start on so many points in the scale as you can using scale exercises. Learn different scale exercises. Learn the target notes. You need to be able to begin your scales on all target notes. Make up patterns so you can get flexible in this. Play between the thirds. There are literally thousands of exercises. Get them all into your fingers, but remember to play music. Check my video out in the description, four scale exercises you need to know. Blues in C, play melodic solos using scales. 
Blues in C, play melodic solos using scales. How to play a melodic solo? Basically, a melodic solo is a solo which has a clear and nice melody. A nice melody is of course a pretty broad description. Nice and melodic, when a melody is logical and connects the different parts of the melody to each other. A melody that tells a story, having a build up, melody going somewhere. The only way to train this is to play a lot of melodies and to listen to other players playing melodies. What do you think sounds good? What is a nice melody to you? Start practicing melodic scale solos by going the simple way. Use small parts of the scales. I've divided the scales into thirds and I pick an interval in each bar and then I solo with it. Start with the interval from the root to the third, then advance to other intervals. I'll just give you a short example from the root to the third in the first four bars of this blues. One, two, three. <laughs> first notes. Another way to play is taking another interval. What you can do is taking a straight line through the chords and then fit the patterns around this straight line through the chords. So you get a pattern that always switches a little bit in the chords. So for example on the C7 and F7, the first two bars of the blues. Then I play the third this, um, to the fifth. Then I go to the F7 looking at where does this fit in the F7 chord. Well, it fits from the seventh to the ninth. One note changes, but it still sounds really a lot like the blues, so. You really have to practice this a lot and take it really, really slow. Don't expect melodies to just pop out. You really have to train this. Check this video. This is how to connect the scales to the chords to really get into this material. Advance to longer runs. Advance to longer scale runs. Just experiment with this. Begin rubato, take it easy and listen to the sound. So adding more thirds together. So for example, from the C to the G, you have the C to the E, then the, C uh, the E to the G, sorry. Uh, on the F you have, from, for example, from the uh, A to the C to the E flat, that's two thirds. The most important thing here is to do it. So make clear for yourself what runs you're going to use and what you're going to work on. So thirds or two thirds together, put this through the form of any tune you're working on. I'll try it here with the blues, just taking it really rubato is. <laughs> together and then I just play between those thirds. You have to practice this a lot to get it into your fingers. Full solo manuals. To get you great support in this I've designed a full solo manual. Um, the full solo manuals are based on one tune and takes you through all the aspects mentioned in this video. How to practice your chords, added all basic chord patterns up and down plus more chord patterns which are really useful to get you a full overview. Running through the options on chord note solos, giving you tons of options on the guide tone lines and how to add more notes and rhythm to your solos. Scale walkthroughs. The full solo manual walks you through all the scales, the common scales of the tunes, show you the basic exercise and some more advanced exercises. Uh, soloing with scales is described and shown how to work from thirds in the scale to combine scales and chord tones getting to bigger scales once. <clears throat> Take a look at the description for the link full solo manual on autumn leaves. Show, play and analyze a short solo on autumn leaves. Three. <laughs> Third in 
interval of the scale down and up, jumping down to pick up the chord notes A, C and E on the A minor triad. Down the scale of the G7 using the third group 5 to 3 and 3 to 1, moving through to the 7th of the G7. Using the third group 3 to the root of the C major and adding 2 thirds from the 5th to the 3rd and the 3rd to the root C, which is the 5th of the F major 7. Third interval from the third to the root, and then adding the third from the seventh to the ninth of the F major seven. You have to be very, very fast to get this, so really pause the video if you need it. Ending on the seventh, this is bar four. Bar five on the B half diminished seven, just playing from the five to the seven and hitting the five again. Adding the chord notes from the third to the flat nine. Uh, on the E7 flat 9 in an arpeggio up. Down the scale, flat 9 to 7, 7 to 5, adding the leading tone G sharp to the A minor 7. Going on with the thirds in the scale patterns, C, A, D, B, uh, running down from the E to the C, a third, adding the A at the end. Eighth bar, up the A7 flat 9 arpeggio from the third, the C sharp, the E, the G, and the B flat, ending up on that high A. I mentioned a lot of videos in this video, so uh, the eight most important chord note patterns, check it in the description. Four scale exercises, you must know chord note solos instantly boost your jazz skills, and this is how to connect scales to the chords. Check these videos to get really into this material. This is an overview video, I've just added everything to five different tunes, so check it out, check it out, check it out. If you have any questions, always ask, please put them in the comments below and you're welcome to ask any topic about saxophones and improvising. You are welcome to like and share and, uh, my tutorials in your social network if you want to get the information out to more people. All links, what I mentioned, is in the description below. Play music and have fun.